channel mammals. Wait till you see what I have for you. Follow me. Let's go in here and sit down. Okay. Are you ready for the unveiling? First of all, hello, channel mammals. Welcome to Yankee. And um, maybe this is a good time for me to say that if you enjoy this video today, do you mind putting a thumb whichever way best applies to your interpretation of it? And also to tell all the world about it. Maybe you'll make some new friends. And the other thing is um, to subscribe if you haven't subscribed and ring the bell and um, comment. That's my, as you know, that's what I love the most. So there we go. We'll look forward to um, sharing it now. <laughs> Here we go. Well. Come on in and make yourselves comfortable. There's plenty of room to sit down here. But wait till you see. Um, this has a special <laughs> humor to me because um, before I open it, I'm going to tell you that several people have asked if I would talk about my ideas of how to decorate or um, what do they call it? It's either a designer or a decorator, home decorator or designer. I'm not even sure what the difference is between those two terms. But, um, and I've always resisted. It's the hardest thing for me to, to even talk about, let alone um, to do. <laughs> so I've just avoided it. And people say, oh, how long did it take you to decorate? And I have no idea because it's an ongoing, ever-evolving experience for me. It's not something that I even think about. So um, this was a treasure that I just found today. That, um, <laughs> OK, you ready? <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> It's a decorative color guide, <laughs> and I think it's from the 20s. And look, trim walls, furniture, ceilings, and floors. <laughs> so you can decide what kind of decor you want your house to have. Um, see, does it go this way? Yeah, maybe. You, know, you, can, you can say, oh, and you, <laughs> you can see. Oh, wait a minute, the ceiling, we did the ceiling, did we? Wait, um, wait, and then walls. And you can, you can say, oh, okay, how does that look? And look at, look at the pie. If you look really closely, you can see a little pie on the table. <laughs> and the pie, the pie, <laughs> the pie changes depending on what <laughs> what your decor is now that's pretty amazing when your pie can adjust to the decor of your house and then the floor no that's the ceilings wait okay the floors <laughs> let's see what would be a good oh that's nice a little spot of red isn't so that's an apple pie that makes me feel it looks like an apple pie to me <laughs> and look look inside watch isn't that amazing? So everything changes as you turn these knobs. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it amazing? This is made for somebody who is really a student of of getting just the right decoration <laughs> together. So there we have it. Isn't that great? I feel fully fortified to be your interior decorator designer right now. How's that? Except that I really disagree with this. <laughs> I would never, I, I'm, I'm actually against this, <laughs> but, but it's so, it's so adorable and I love it so much that I think I can definitely um, say that it can be a part of, of home. This, whatever way <laughs> people want, it's fine with me. And I feel like the main quality that that I just expressed that makes it possible that I'm, I'm trying to talk myself into being an interior decorator or designer <laughs> just to see what it would be like to do that for people um, because people do want some guidance there so it would be it'd be nice to be able to help friends and I do have no trouble helping friends um, actually um, it's the love if we love somebody and they need help 
needed a helping hand in anything. Well, of course, we're always ready, you know, to, to help out. And that's what, that's what um, motivates everything, I think, is love and adorableness, like this adorable thing <laughs> here. So I think, um, let me just tell you a little example of one experience that I can think of, although I'm sure there have been other places. Um, I just can't think of them right now, but um, a friend, a dear friend, um, whom had done so much for us, uh, one time said I, she'd like to have some help decorating her bathroom. <laughs> and she lives in a little apartment um, upstate. And, and I just thought, oh, that would be so much fun to help her with that. And a friend, another friend from Texas, who always had collected her work, said, oh, I want to be for, there for that. I want to work together with the, the two of you, and we'll we'll just have so much fun. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is turning into such a, a, a gay affair. You know, just all of us having a wonderful time squished in this bathroom, trying to um, figure out how to make it better. And it it was so great. I think that the main quality, starting with love, is not leading. It seems odd, doesn't it? Because I think the, um, the occupation of being a decorator is, is that you, you need to be <clears throat> the leader. You need to know your business. And, um, but to me, what, what home is all about is it's the one place on this whole earth, the one place where you have complete experience it's your home. It's your expression. Nobody has to tell you anything about it. I just love the, the, the fact that it should be liberated to the individual, not by any kind of code or this is good design and this is bad design. None of it matters. None of it. In fact, some people may not even care about um, a visual. They, it might not mean anything to them, and that's fine. Um, we have five senses in which to express ourselves, right? And there's so many different facets to our own expression, and each one of us are different. So of course we're going to have different emphasis of abilities. And um, I guess um, visual things are come naturally to me, but I don't think I'm right about anything. It's just I notice things, and um, and and so then it, it applies that I would I would. Uh, situate it somehow in my experience, but it's, it's not, it's not, it doesn't matter which angle or which way. So, and in fact, I, I know um, Richard and I have this dear friend who, upstate, who's a professor, and he's always been a professor. He, well, he's an actor also, a Shakespearean actor, and he lives in a house um, down on this beautiful lake with piles of books all around him, every stacks everywhere. In his library, where he always sits all the time, are bookcases that have, are filled to overflowing, toppling up to the ceiling, down in piles, and finally growing around his chair. And when you walk in to visit him, he's so handsome, and he's such a character. He's so upright and proud, and all you see is this beautiful environment. But he doesn't see it that way. For him, it's right at hand what he needs. And to me, it's, it's just beautiful. I wouldn't want to change one page of it. And so that's what, that's what I, or maybe somebody else just likes to have clutter about, or their shoes right below that chair somewhere, or whatever it is that, that um, that comes naturally to them, that they need. And that's the same way it is for us, actually. Um, um, everything comes about just by need, of needing to put something someplace. Um, easy access, but not offensive to, to me. <laughs> and so it's, it's really just still private. It's not, it's not about the public. So um, decorating needs to be or if it is, you know, if somebody says, well, I, I'm not very visual, but I would like to have a, a, a nice visual environment for other people to appreciate, um, or I just don't have time, and I don't know how to even think, I'm, I'm almost never sitting down, maybe, maybe could you help me, um, or whatever. And, 
And when when for, someone first said, could you please do um, a YouTube about talking about your ideas on decorating, um, Frederick said, well, you know, maybe it would be easier if we were decorating um, for uh, like an orphanage or an old people's home or a school or some other public place where it didn't feel like we were being so intrusive in someone's private place. And I thought, so relieved to thinking of it that way because I just daren't say anything, uh, even if someone wants me to, because I actually love everyone just the way they are. And when I see them standing there, I see them in, in a whole environment, and it all becomes one picture to me. And it's just, so, so anyway, when he said that, I thought, that could work, you know, because um, if you if you um, if you go to, you know what, I'm going to get up right now and go to another part of the car of the passenger deck here. Frederick always wants me to do things up here because he loves the proscenium arch, <laughs> the rope <laughs> that pulls down in flowing like you know like red velvet curtains <laughs> coming down to the floor <laughs> and. and and the swags across the front of the theater. So this is the music crescent up here. <laughs> and, um, and we have wild horses waiting to listen to the performance. <laughs> so, okay, so when Frederick mentioned the idea of maybe if we could work in some kind of a, a school or some other environment, all of a sudden, I don't know why I thought of this, but it just occurred to me that an idea, an example of decorating, if you will. Um, when we lived upstate, we, we had a house that had no bath on the second level of the house. There was a shower in one quarter. There was a, an armoire with, um, you know, like a water closet. <laughs> You'd open the armoire and there was a toilet just for you. And you could close yourself in there. <laughs> and then there was a basin and, you know, other places. There was a place to clean up and freshen up. But there was no bathtub. And so we decided, and the prettiest spot was at the end of one of our bathrooms, to build out over the roof below, which was the back shed. So we built out over it, and we had to have a step up to that spot because the pipes of the bathtub had to go underneath it. And so that meant the ceiling also was up higher than the other ceiling. The end of the other ceiling was the heavy beam that made the, sh the shape of the house. So this other ceiling was tucked up under it, and we had just enough tile to cover the floor with the most beautiful tile that we made, but we made it with an, an antique um, uh, transfer, um, ceramic transfer or decal. Um, it's interchangeable, but decal sounds more temporary, but it's baked, fire, fired on. And we had made these tiles. We didn't know why. We just had that many of the, these beautiful little bouquets of fruit, beautiful lush fruit. And there were exactly the amount of tile to tile that section there where the bathtub was. And then we built windows going out all the way across and in. So it was this like a little alcove of light. And when you, and the first time I, I took a, a bath, I'll, I'll just show you how. I was lying in the bathtub and I was thinking, I was like this, right? And I was thinking, gosh, the ceiling here doesn't have anything to look at. And all of a sudden, it made me realize we could use the ceiling as a place to put all these photographs of these ancient relatives. <laughs> they were all framed once they were in a library in our, um, in our, our, our house um, when we were growing up. And then um, they were in a passageway in, later on. And now I took them all and nailed them to the ceiling with their frames in a beautiful pattern. And then I would be lying in the bathtub looking up and seeing and meeting and talking to, well, <laughs> my relatives from way back. And it was so much fun, the studying, you know, what, what, how they, what they were like the way they were dressed, the way they, um, maybe even physical characteristics that I recognized or uh, their manner. And I got to know all these people that I never really thought of or never took the time, who takes the time to stand in a passageway and 
look at a wall of photographs. <laughs> and this way, when everybody came to visit, they just couldn't wait to take a bath and get to know us better. <laughs> so it was, it was really fun. Um, so I thought, oh, that idea could be perfect for, imagine like if you were um, in an in a old person's home, a retirement home or something, and maybe because you didn't have to work or have any engagements especially, you might take a little, um, you know, a little nap mid-morning or um, you, after lunch you might become a bit sulfurific and go and take another little rest and maybe you spend um, more of your day in your bed instead of when we're running around the world now, we don't go to bed until it's so dark, dark at night, it wouldn't matter what was on our ceiling. But it would be so much fun if you were in a home and maybe you learned to paint as a, as a retired person and you could have all your little paintings on the ceiling and we could help people do that or photos of their children or their grandchildren or their great grandchildren and have maybe signs like Bible passages or letters that somebody wrote to you or any anything you any sayings that you especially like and then you could also have pulley systems on the ceiling where you could put a sock full of beans push it up and down would come your pen and your special beautiful letter cards to send to somebody instead of taking a nap, nap you think oh I'd like to write a letter and down would come your little kit for writing a letter and another little pulley could have some some treats in it, like snacks. <laughs> and um, you can have pulleys all over your bed and just have so much fun enjoying, enjoying your environment where you spend time. That's just one idea, just one simple idea. But it just grew naturally out of an idea that had already been ex exercised. And that's how you, you can share. And, and then wouldn't it be fun to go on little treasure hunts in the attic with somebody or just sit down and have a good giggle together and, and just get to know each other and make it be that you're not leading, but you're just enjoying the thrill of working together. And whatever it comes to be, it doesn't really matter. Enjoyed. And instead of, you know, just being a, a stiff decorator that says that goes over there or make, move that over there and don't forget this and oh, that a little lower. Yes, okay, and oh, we must go to this catalog and start rifling through and ordering things. Wallpaper, fabrics, da 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 da, all those things. They may happen, but if they happen in this non leading way, everybody discovers it together. They just feel that incredible oneness and it just grows naturally the way all things in life do, rather than having it isolated out as an, um, a specialized occupation which I'm not against. It's just not what I can teach and give. What I can teach and give is giving up. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's quite a lesson to learn. I can still learn some more. <laughs> well, let's go find another place to, to, um, to, to visit just to, for a change of atmosphere. Come on. I always love this chair because I can join several different conversations. <laughs> Wherever I am, I can look over their shoulder. <laughs> I can go join this little group over here. <laughs> So here we are. Oh, you know what? I have to tell you something good new of good news. You know, we told you about Patreon, right? Well, some people have already started to contribute to Patreon and it's what has made it possible for us to Do you hear me? Can you hear me better than you've ever heard me before? Well, <laughs> there's a reason for that. See this little black thing? Is it still here? Yes. Does that, does that sound noisy to you? Um, well, it's where the noise is coming from. And also, forgive me if it's a little scratchy, we're still learning because we just started using it today, the very first day. So there may be some little rustling noises you hear now and again, and we'll get better at it. But for now, I just want you to know that we're so grateful. This is actually helping people who've been writing so many times saying, it's very difficult to understand because your voice is too soft. So here we are. So this area in here is really fun because this table somebody gave to us but without legs. And so what were you going to do with a table without legs? And it's perfect for being out in the water on a rough night. You can still be having your soup and not spilling it because the table hangs with its own weight. The boat moves 
but the table stays steady. It looks like the table's moving, but it's actually the ship that's moving. And so your soup doesn't spill. <laughs> so we, we hung this from the ceiling so we can have it open or, or we can have it closed. Like, I mean, you could even do, you could even do a somersault. <laughs> Right here. Come here. Oh! Time for boxing. <laughs> Just in time. Box on. Just in time uh, for boxing. Um, listen, I'm. S well, I guess it's okay. Do you want to be here for it? <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Just. <laughs> this is kind of a, a hodgepodge of a, a class. <laughs> okay, Kevin. I'm ready. Okay. One. Two. One more time. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. Ah. Oh, Kevin. Oh my gosh. Oh, are you okay? Kevin, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here. I didn't mean to hurt you. What happened? <laughs> okay, okay, everybody. I think it's time for lunch. I'll have it right to time. you. Okay. Yeah, I feel